welcome sang today we are going to learn grammar of class 10 and the topic is subject verb agreement to start with i want to ask you a question what is a sentence easy right a sentence is a group of words that makes complete sense then let me write a sentence here for you Okay, look at this sentence. Tenzin is playing. All right, let me write another one. Tenzin are playing. First sentence says Tenzin is playing. The second sentence says Tenzin are playing. Now, which one is correct and which one is wrong? Of course, this one is correct, right? And this one is wrong. Why? Look here at the second sentence. This one is your subject. This one is your verb. That's helping verb. And this one is the main verb. Over here, this is your verb, helping verb. This is your main verb, and this is your subject. Now here there is a singular subject, and the verb here is singular, right? And over here there is singular subject, but the verb is plural. So this verb does not agree with the subject. So that's why this is not a correct sentence. Now, if you want to make it correct, either you have to change this R is a plural subject, okay? You have to change it into is. That is singular subject. Singular subject. Then then is playing, or you keep it like this. R. Then you change the number of subject there. He, she, and then then are playing. Now here the subject is plural. So plural subject, plural verb. That is what subject verb agreement is in simple. Okay, you can see the definition here. Subject verb agreement refers to the fact that the subject and verb in a sentence must agree in number and person. Now see, there's an agreement here between verb and subject. And over here also, there's an agreement between the verb and subject. Okay, because this is plural subject. And this is plural verb. Now, no, things are not that easy because see some of the students, it's difficult for them to identify the subject. Then, which one is the subject? What is the subject? In fact, the definition of subject is a subject is either noun, pronoun, or noun phrase. and a subject is the one who does action one who does action and what does action or who does action now over here you can see okay if you add playing football now over here look at this which one is a noun or pronoun tense of course you may say football is also noun so is playing is already eliminated because this is not neither noun nor nor pronoun so tenzin and football are noun now again ask who is doing the action tenzin so tenzin is your subject right so that is how we can identify the subject now comes verb there are different types of verb in fact verb may denotes action position or being right and there are many types of verbs over here we are talking about finite verb and also the verb of number singular verb or plural verb now this is just one case it's a very easy case very simple case there are many different cases where we have multiple subjects 
And when we have multiple subjects, there may be some confusion. That's why we have rules of subject verb agreement. And today we are going to learn some of the important rules of subject and verb agreement. And I would like to start with rule number one. Singular subject subject singular subject is followed by singular verb plural subject is followed by plural verb now see this is the first rule very easy rule that you have to understand now see then then is eating right now or we can say a boy is eating this is singular subject and it is followed by singular verb there's an agreement between the verb and the subject now next one plural subject boys are eating now boys you can see it's a, it's a subject is plural so you have the verb plural that is following the subject right now when we are when i'm talking about plural verb and singular verb it's just like this let me rub this Now, singular subjects, singular verb. You know, you have to understand singular and plural verb, right? Plural verb. Now, singular verb are is, am, was. And you have has also. And plural are, were, and have. Look at this. Singular verb. Tension is eating. I am playing. He was dancing. Tension has seen the movie. Over here. They are playing. They were playing. They have seen the movie. So that is how we can define plural verb and single verb here because it's very important for you to understand this and after that i'll move on to the second rule number two person right now you may have studied this in simple present tense there are first person second person and third persons in grammar right now the first person, second person, and third person. Okay, first person subject is always followed by verb number one. And second person is also followed by verb number one. But the third person singular is always followed by verb with S. Right? You know this. This is all, these are all in simple present tense there. What I'm trying to say is, I eat food. I is your first person. So verb number one, eat. You, again, eat food. Right? You is your second person. And again, verb that follows is, Verb number one, but third person, he, she, it, or name of a person, we say it's food. This it's is verb with s. That is what your rule number two is. 
Okay, let's move on to the rule number three. Now, rule number three is if two different subjects okay, joined If two different subjects joined by and no and is a and, and is a conjunction, right? And is referred to two different individuals, then it is followed by plural verb. Let me show you an example. Okay, you read this sentence here. The principal and the math sir are going home. Now this is this and this are your subjects, right? They are two individuals and they are they are joined by conjunction and and now here your verb is are going plural verb because these are two individuals, right? Two individuals joined by one, uh, two individuals joined by and so it is followed by verb plural verb again same thing if we take this now see look at it carefully if two different subjects subjects this one is for one subject this one is the second subject right joined by and is referred to two different individuals then it is followed by the plural verb you can see this plural verb now the contrast you can see here Rule number four. Okay, rule number four. If two different subjects joined by and is referred to the same individual, then it is followed by singular verb how because in some schools maybe some schools math teacher himself maybe maybe the principal right in that case he is the same person who is the principal and math teacher if we want to make it an individual a single individual what we need to do is we remove this article the definite article now in this case the principal and math sir is going home. Why? Now, without this definite article here in front of math, sir, these two subjects, they are one individual. They are one. They are, no, they are not two individuals. So, the, the definite article makes a great difference here. The principal and math, sir, is going home. So, this is rule number four. And now, moving on to rule number five, Now oh, this is quite easy. Two subjects joined by conjunction or, right? Conjunction or is followed. Singular. Two subjects joined by or, this is conjunction, is followed by singular verb. Tenzin or he, she, he, okay, you can say, has broken the glass. Tenzin or he, she, has broken the glass. This conjunction is or. If it had been like and, then this had been have, plural, right? Now, since there's all here joining the two subjects, then we use singular verb here. Okay? 
All right, that is easy. And now moving on to the sixth one. Next row. In pronoun. Now see, you can see this rule number six. Indefinite pronoun. Now, what is pronoun? Pronoun is used instead of noun, right? And there are different types of pronoun. There may be personal pronoun, reflexive pronoun, emphasizing pronoun, demonstrative pronoun. But here we are talking about indefinite pronoun. Indefinite pronouns are everyone, anyone, someone, somebody, or everybody. These are indefinite pronoun, and they are always followed by by singular verb, followed by singular verb. Indefinite pronouns are always followed by singular verb. How? So everyone is happy. We say everyone is happy. We do not say everyone are happy, or we say somebody is coming right somebody is coming we say somebody is coming we don't say somebody are coming we don't say everybody are singing we don't say that everybody is singing that is how we use indefinite pronoun and it is always followed by singular verb understood all right let's move on to the next rule a lot of writing right this is grammar. Now moving on to the next rule. Some singular subject look like plural and just like uh, physics. Physics, uh, you can say math or mathematics, you can say economics. These all look like, you know, uh, they look like plural. See, this S here, this S here, this S here. They look like plural, but in fact, they are singular, right? So, this type of, this type of subjects are always followed by singular verb. No. You can say physics is easy. We don't say physics are easy because this is a singular subject and we use singular verb to describe it or uh, to refer to it. Okay? In the same way, maths, some of you may find maths difficult. Maths is an interesting subject. Economics deals with the economy of a country. That is how we use these subjects. Some singular subjects look like plural subject because of S after it, at the end of it, but they are not plural. They are always singular. <laughs> Measurement. Okay, unit of measurement, unit of measurement is followed by singular verb. Now see what is it? If I want to explain, if I want to say like two liter milk is needed. I don't say two, two is plural, right? Two is two number. And liter, your measurement unit. I don't say like two liter milk are needed. I don't say this because it is always followed by singular verb. That is what? You have to do. You have to use singular verb after 
all the unit of measurements there. Okay, now let's move on to the next. Now this is quite interesting. Number nine, rule number nine. See, you may have some noun phrase, uh, such as subjects, subjects like one of the, after that you write to write, or each of the, right? Oh, see, these are phrases there. Then, one of the boys, if you write boys, okay, you have to write, no, this one, you, it looks like plural, isn't it? Boys. But you're talking about one among many boys. So that's why, at the end of it, what follows is, is playing. It is not are playing. It is, is playing. One of the boys is playing. Many of us tend to make mistakes like one of the boys are playing because we tend to look at this S, but it is not right. We're talking about one of the boys, one among many boys. In the same way, each of the girls, each of the girls is eating sweets. Okay. Each of them means from many of those girls you are talking about each one, right? So that is why you have to write down singular verb after such subjects. That is rule number nine. Be careful. This is very important. One of the boys is playing or each of the girls is eating or each of the girls has seen the movie, not have, has. So that is how we, uh, we have to follow this rule number nine. And now moving on to this uh, rule number 10. Now sometimes the subjects are joined with either or, neither nor, like when subjects are joint by either or no, no, no. nor now in such case like uh, you know I have Tenzin friends Okay, let's see E I T C here either Tenzin friends or Tenzin has okay what do you write here? Broken the Class. Look at this. Either tension friends or tension that's broken glass. Now there's a confusion, right? Or if both of them are singular, then it's very easy. You can write singular verb is. But over here you have plural subject. Now if both of them are singular subjects, it's easy, right? You write singular verb there. But now you have plural subject here and singular subject here. The verb follows which subject over here? Now rule is that you have to, the verb follows the nearest subject, the nearest now, which is nearest to the verb? Tenzin, right? So Tenzin's friend, either Tenzin's friend or Tenzin has broken the glass because Tenzin is nearer to the verb. Now, be careful, this is only in case of either or, or neither nor, or you may have or only also. 
not in case it's not it's end it's not like that so yeah you're, you're just you uh, following this only if it is either or neither nor or or only now let's change this supposing if either tenzin or his friends broken the glass now look at this sentence either eit is here either tenzin or his friends that's broken glass now which subject there are two subjects here again this is singular subject this is the plural subject right yes now the verb follows the subject nearest to the verb right so you have to write down have here why because this is nearest to the this is nearest to the verb right that is what your rule number 10 is moving on to rule number 11 now now rule number 11 says if connectives like along with as well as together with accompanied by etc are used to join two subjects the verb agrees with subject mentioned first how now i'm going to show you with this sentence here you can see tendon as well as his friends now see look at this this verb is right now you may say friends is plural why why not r here then this is the rule see this is the subject and this is also the subject right this is singular subject this is plural subject right now these two subjects are joined by as well as the rule says if two subjects are joined by as well as along with accompanied by or together with the verb should always follow the first subject, the subject that's mentioned first. Now here Tianjin is singular subject and this is plural subject. That is why now you have to follow, now the verb needs to follow Tianjin here. So there has to be singular subject. Alright? Now in the second sentence here again, you can see Tianjin's friend. Now here the subject mentioned first is plural subject as well as tens in here now this one this subject is singular subject but the rule says you have to the verb follows the subject mentioned first and which is mentioned first here tenzin's friend that is plural subject right so that is why you are going to write r here that is how this rule works now look at this properly and practice all right now let's move on to the rule number 12 okay rule number 12 noun phrase noun phrase okay Look at these two cases. Countable noun can be anything, right? Or I can write down here a number of boys. A number of boys. Do you see that? A number of boys. Or you can say, right, say a number of boys are playing. A number of boys are playing which is the verb it's the plural verb right the phrase is a number of countable noun boys are playing the difference between this and this is over here it has got a the article look at that and over here you have got the so if i write down if i write down the number of boys in the class, of course, yeah. 
Now, after that, if this, now which one is the verb? This one is the verb, right? Over here, this one is the verb. Over here, the verb uses plural verb. And over here, the verb uses singular. Why? Because over here, it's a number of boys. The phrase is a number of boys. So in such phrases, a number of boys or a number of dogs are barking. A number of birds are flying. So in such cases where you use phrase, a number of the verb followed is always plural. And if the phrase is the number of anything like this, the number of birds is less. The verb that follow will be singular verb. So that is how this article of and the makes great difference. It makes a great difference. Okay, now let's move on to rule number 13. Now you may know collective noun, right? When you learn noun, you may not, uh, you may have studied collective noun also, like uh, a couple. Collective noun, families. Collective noun. So, collective noun is somewhat different. Now, it is all. It is sometimes followed by plural verb, and sometimes it's followed by singular verb, and it is just like this. It depends upon how the sentence is used. Now see, if it is used like the family is going to India. Now look at this. The family is the collective noun and the verb used here is singular, right? Why? Because this family is acting as a single unit. Single unit. It is acting like a single unit. Right? Now see, sometimes you may have situation like this also. The family or dash going India. Now look at this sentence. The family dash going separately. Now they are not walking as a single unit here. They are working as separate units, right? Separate units. So that is why you have to write down plural verb here. The thing is that if a collective noun works as a single unit, then it is always followed by singular verb. But if the collective noun acts like separate units, like this, family are going separately, to India and Nepal, in that case, the plural verb follows. The verb that follows will be plural verb. Okay, and then I uh, conclude by saying that these rules are going to help you in the examinations and uh, not just examination but in enhancing your writing skill, reading skill, and also spoken English. With this, I'm going to stop. It's here today. Thank you.